Welcome to Texas Heart Institute Educational Programs on Technologies and Techniques. I'm Zvon Krajer. I'm an interventional cardiologist at Texas Heart Institute and CHI Health Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center in Houston. The title of this presentation is TAVR for Bicuspid Aortic Valve. What are the outcomes and what are the unmet needs? Uh, I have no uh, conflict of interest uh, pertinent to this presentation. Bicuspid aortic valve disease uh, pathogenesis uh, consists of development of valvular sclerosis in bicuspid aortic valve patients that typically begins uh, early in life and progresses more rapidly than in trial leaflet patients. Bicuspid valve disease can progress to severe aortic uh, stenosis in as little as between 10 to 12 years while patients with trileaflet valves have approximately 20 to 30 years to progress to severe aortic stenosis. The eccentric jets that are caused by asymmetric bicuspid aortic valve leaflets lead to increase in wall stress and contribute to a formation of calcifications of the leaflets and also progressive dilatation of the ascending aorta. Now, what is the prevalence of this disease? The prevalence of bicuspid aortic valve disease varies significantly according to geography. For instance, in the United States, the incidence is somewhere between 1 to 1.6% in published studies, while in uh, Europe it uh, is significantly higher and uh, is occurring in up to 6.7% of patients. Now, in uh, Asia, and particularly from this publication, in China, the incidence is close to 11%. So what are the unfavorable <clears throat> bicuspid aortic valve features that complicates TAVR? One of them is uh, aortic valve annulus that is more elliptical as shown here. Another one is frequent asymmetric calcium location as shown in the second slide. <clears throat> the third one is frequent extensive calcifications extending into the left ventricular outflow tract that can lead to, lead to a potential rupture during balloon dilatation of the valve. There's also more frequent uh, association of shorter distance to the annulus from the coronary ostia as shown here, and also frequent association of aortic uh, dilatation of various types, as well more frequent horizontal aorta as shown in the last slide. Now, as far as the classification and morphology is concerned of bicuspid aortic valve morphology, uh, Sievers and co-workers uh, describe this uh, clearly, and this is the most uh, commonly used classification in patients with bicuspid aortic valve. Sievers type 1 occurs in about 7% of patients, and it consists of two fully developed cusps without any fusion of raphe. Sievers type 1, that is the most common type, in their study occurred in 88% of patients. And as we can see, it consists of one fully developed cusp and two underdeveloped cusp and then raphe uh, that occurs uh, <clears throat> more commonly between the left and right coronary cusp in 71% of patients or between the uh, right coronary cusp and non-coronary cusp that occurs in about 15% of patients, and then less commonly between left coronary cusp and non-coronary cusp that occurs in 3% of patients. The least uh, common one is uh, Sievers type uh, 2, which is actually the most uh, complex type of uh, bicuspid morphology that occurs in about 5% of patients and consists of one fully developed cusp and two underdeveloped cusp, and then uh, two either complete or partial raphe. Now, more recently, uh, there is another uh, novel classification as far as uh, bicuspid aortic valve uh, pathology <coughs> that was published in, by Yoon and co-workers uh, <coughs> in uh, 2020. And as we can see, uh, he divided them in three categories that are predictive of uh, mortality and morbidity as far as uh, the classification is concerned. The worst one is one that's shown on the right-hand side in a red uh, 
uh, color that shows a scenario where you have <coughs> severe calcification of uh, leaflets and also fusion of the raphe, where the mortality at uh, two years of follow-up is somewhere close to 27% in comparison of uh, a significantly lower incidence uh, of problems and morbidity and mortality in patients that have a minimal calcification and no fusion of raphe that is shown uh, in uh, the dark uh, blue line. More recently, the technology has been developed to uh, analyze patients with bicuspid aortic valve anatomy and to design a patient-specific simulation for optimal implantation depth of the prosthesis in an effort to uh, prevent uh, complications such as infolding and aortic regurgitation. So as we can see on the left-hand slide, we have a severe calcification of both leaflets and fusion of the raphe that frequently can lead to uh, complications such as uh, significant aortic regurgitation at the end of the procedure. Now in the second slide we can see this valve, which is a self-expanding valve, is partially deployed and we can see a significant infolding that would lead to aortic insufficiency. On the third slide we can see actually the prosthesis that has been removed where we have significant infolding. And uh, in the last slide, we can see a simulation image where we can predict the severity of um, insufficiency that might occur if appropriate uh, <clears throat> size of the valve and also the depth of deployment is not being used. <clears throat> so what are the outcomes as far as uh, bicuspid aortic valve uh, anomaly is concerned. And here we can have a, a, a pretty extensive study from the ACC TVT registry in bicuspid aortic stenosis related to mortality and morbidity and incidence of stroke. And we can see here in a huge number of patients, 2,700 with a bicuspid and close to 8,000 of tricuspid, we can see that after using the propensity score matched pairs, we can see there was no <clears throat> difference in mortality at 30 days between uh, bicuspid and tricuspid pathology. And actually, uh, uh, there was only a significant difference as far as stroke is concerned between two entities, with uh, stroke being higher for patients with bicuspid aortic valve, which is obviously related to a more complex uh, aortic uh, pathology, particularly related to a fusion of the raphe and a more severe calcification of the valve. Now here is another study. It's a meta-analysis of bicuspid versus tricuspid valve in a <clears throat> collection of 12 relevant clinical studies. And we can see the only difference between two entities is uh, incidence of uh, residual regurgitation at 30 days, which is significantly higher in patients with bicuspid aortic valve. There was no difference in mortality at 30 days or no difference in mortality at one year and also no difference as far as the need for permanent pacemaker implantation is concerned. Now uh, the CMS uh, analysis in very large number of patients also <coughs> revealed from the propensity score matching for uh, <coughs> 3,000 patients that underwent surgical repair in comparison with 1,000 patients that had a bicuspid aortic valve and underwent a TAVR. And we can see here on the right-hand side that as far as mortality, stroke, and heart failure is concerned, after two years of follow-up, there was no significant difference between SAVR and TAVR. So when should we consider surgery for patients with bicuspid aortic pathology? The studies have shown that patients uh, that are younger, less than 65 years uh, of age, should undergo SAVR or surgical repair. Also, patients that are mechanical for, uh, candidates for mechanical valve would benefit obviously more from surgery, and patients that have extensive coronary artery calcifications and disease, as well as patients with a significant dilatation of the 
ascending aorta of more than 4.5 centimeters, and patients with multivalvular disease, as well as patients that have unfavorable calcification pattern of uh, the valve that might lead to a higher risk of annular rupture, and also patients that uh, have a risk of residual perivalvular regurgitation, and also patients that have a challenging access, particularly in patients that have hostile iliofemoral anatomy. So in conclusion, tavern in bicuspid aortic stenosis poses significant challenges uh, due to aortic valve uh, disease complexity that I've described and frequent association of orthopathy and dilatation of the ascending aorta. However, the results have improve, improved as far as tavern is concerned in this type of a pathology with current generation devices in terms of procedural success and lower incidence of perivalvular leak. The association of arthropathy is, however, less of concern in all the patients at high surgical risk. However, it should be carefully considered in younger patients. The durability and long-term results of TAVR in this pathology is yet to be defined because we do not have, until now, any randomized studies to compare either the uh, com combination of problems related to a bicuspid pathology or comparison between bicuspid pathology and tricuspid pathology. Thank you for your attention.